Hi all, welcome back to the Scotch Podcast today. We've got Mr Cannon with us, who is our director of the Scotch Musical this year, Footloose. Um, episode two, so we're going to jump into it, Mr Cannon. So when did you first become interested in theatre and what sparked your passion Your yeah, passion for it? Right, um, well I, I've been into theatre at a very, very young age. Um, actually ever since I was... Oh, five years old or something I'd make little theatre for my family and I'd sort of get all my teddies together and create a little stage and act out a little story with them um, so like at, so at quite a young age I've been involved I've done lots of singing and things uh, one of my early performances I did as a professional performer I was about 11 years old and I sang snuggle pot and snuggle pot and cuddle pie um, and it's basically I got I did things like the school musical when I was in high school um, and it's just kept going when I finished high school I just got stuck into doing university courses I went to Whopper Musical Theatre School which is a pretty good school um, and, and just really focused on singing, acting, dancing, movement I eventually went to Paris as well and studied a physical theatre school um, in Paris, a school called the School of Jacques Lecoq, which is a very specific sort of European style of theatre. And it was there that I also learnt how to do directing. Um, so, um, so I had the sort of a variety of skills of singing, acting, dancing, movement, and then as well as directing and, and theatre creation as well. So it's something that I've been very passionate about my whole life. So, from going over to Europe into a completely different country, what's the experience like? Not knowing as many people, not knowing as many connections, yeah. is that like a daunting experience? Or? Oh, it's very daunting as well. Um, and also because, well, I, I've worked in France, um, Spain, Germany, uh, and Japan for a while too. So, um, but in France and Spain, it was all like I had to learn the language. Um, it's quite difficult acting uh, in another language as well. Um, so I had to learn yeah, French and Spanish. Um, I then went, uh, and that's where I was doing some study and performance. I then also went and worked in a, a theatre company in Germany in a, in a village or well, town called Coburg. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and that was all in German as well. So there's a lot of barriers you have to push through to get through that. Um, uh, and then, yeah, just living in another, another culture, you know, in Paris it was amazing, you know, you have your baguettes and your cheeses and it's all pretty exciting, but, um, you know, you get on the, the underground to get where you're going, it's so different to here, um, but you just, you learn and you get used to it. Yeah, and as, as you said, you started this love when you're five years old playing with your teddy bears, and then yeah. you get to 11. Yeah. That's only six years, like you're a 11 year old kid, you're in year five, year six, and yeah. you're on a professional set in yeah. front of thousands of people. Yeah. What's that experience like, you know, with an 11 year old kid and you got 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, what's that like, the relationship and how do you get on with others? And Everyone's really supportive, it's nice. Um, I guess everyone's really encouraging and if you're, you know, uh, if you're young and, and enthusiastic, everyone's, you know, yeah, really supportive and keen to, you know, see you succeed and, um, and see, see the show go well. Um, so I was really lucky with that. I had a lot of, I had a lot of really great support for that. And throughout all the shows, the hundreds of shows that you've been a part of, what would you say is the one moment that comes to mind, you know, backstage or on stage, which has just been a complete disaster, it's been funny, <laughs> or what's that moment? Everyone seems to have one. So. Uh, one that comes to my mind is, I used to do a lot of touring um, with an opera company, and we did a lot of outdoor performances, and um, and so I was working on singing in the opera La Boheme, and we got to the final act, and it was a, one of your typical dramatic operas where the, the soprano dies at the end, and it was all very emotional, very sad, and um, and we were in sort of outback Australia, and there were so many bugs flying around outside because they're all attracted to all the lights, 
and I was about to sing my note and I had a bug that flew right into my mouth and just like sat right on the back of my throat and I was just like coughing and spluttering and, and tears were in my eyes as I was trying to suppress this bug as it was like, I was just like choking on stage. And, um, and everyone afterwards sort of said, wow, Nick, you're really getting into it. Wow, the emotions were so strong. And I was like, man, I was just choking, I'm dying. But you know, it's sort of like, I guess luckily I pulled it off to make it, you know, work with it. That's awesome. Got through. That's that's a tough through. experience and you've got through and you've, yeah. you've done it better than what you could have, could have done it before with that bug. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And um, what's been like the most memorable sort of thing that you've seen? Is it like working with students or is it, you know, someone else that you've been able to work with? Or what's been the show that's been the most memorable and what was that reason? Uh, I think I'm lucky. I've, I've got lots of experiences like that. Um, I do really appreciate um, like this Scotch show has been great because um, you just see the journey, you know, young performers take and how much they learn and, and the satisfaction that you get, you know, being on stage and singing and acting and telling a story. It's, you know, it doesn't really matter about the final product. Like it's all good quality, but it's, it's more about just the experience that they get, and that that's really rewarding. Um, but I've also done shows, I've done shows, there was a beautiful show I did called Cloud Street um, quite a few years ago and it's just such a wonderful Australian opera, um, so Australian opera is a bit quite rare so um, it's nice to be a part of that and, and it was just a beautiful tender story and I got to play a really good role um, and it's a nice community. A lot of the, the, the most memorable shows are ones where you've had a really good cast around you, um, good ensemble. One of my other top memories I think is also performing in Germany. Um, I was filling in for an actor who couldn't do all the performances and I quickly learned this role. It was all in German. I sort of hadn't really had much rehearsal and before I knew it I was on stage in this beautiful old theatre in Germany performing this role. I was scared. I was so scared. Um, but I sort of got through the performance and did the bows and once the curtain went down I could hear all the, the, the cast and the crew all clapping and cheering and I sort of thought, oh, what's that for? I looked around and they're all cheering for me and that was really quite touching. And sort of, that was quite a special moment as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And if we can go to the Scotch Music and if we can go to Footloose, yeah. if we could go back 39 years to 1984, what advice <laughs> would you give Kevin Bacon? Uh, <laughs> uh, what advice? Keep going. Do it. You're great. I love it. Uh, one of the great things about Footloose that I love so much is that, you know, Kevin Bacon, he's a pretty studly guy. He's cool, he's strong, he's smart, he's sensitive. Um, and, um, and I sort of really like that as sort of a role model, I guess. And I really like how that character is portrayed in this musical as well, that, um, you know, he can still be a pretty tough guy, but just loves dancing. Quite often these days, dancing is looked on as a bit, you know, it's a bit not mediocre. But yeah, mediocre. Yeah, mediocre. It's not something that guys do or men do sometimes. Or whereas, you know, my experience is I've seen some extraordinary dancers, male, female, and they're just so strong and passionate. It's just a wonderful way of expressing yourself physically, um, and, and it's such a release. And it's, it's so the emotion of the emotion yeah. of it exactly. Um, and, and that's kind of what I really love about this story, and that's kind of what I really love about you know Kevin Bacon doing that role. That he was just a really cool, passionate guy. Good role model as well for others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like something in the movie that wasn't so strong, and I like it in this musical. It's a bit different than the movie, but this musical is that he's he's not as violent. In the movie, I think he was just a little bit violent, but in in this musical. Ren is a much more, he's able to achieve things in a non-violent way and I think that's a really important process to be able to understand. Well that was our next area, it was like how's the traditional version oh, yeah. and compared to the Scotch version, what sort of differences and similarities will we be seeing that? Yeah, well that that's one of the main ones, um, although there's still, you know, we still see a bit of violence in the musical, um, you know, where we see these characters of the town of Beaumont 
they can be pretty tough. Um, but uh, obviously then there's the music. Um, in the movie, you, you hear a lot of the songs played in the background, but they're not you know, featured where it's in the musical. You know, they're, they're being sung, we see them being sung, the characters are singing them, you know, moving and dancing with them, which is great. One of the challenges with this musical is to create an atmosphere of dancing in a town, Beaumont, where dancing is forbidden. It's sort of an interesting challenge with this musical is to have dancers that you're not looking like you're actually dancing. So like, for the gym scene, um, you know, it, where it's a big dance number, but we have to make it look like they're working out or exercising and that sort of thing, but they're all doing it together as, as a dance kind of thing. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. And um, with the musical, pre-game, you know, pre-show, <laughs> how are you feeling? Like, are the nerves, are you anxious, are you excited, you know? Um, I'm pretty excited. I am a bit nervous. It's, we've still got a big journey to go to get there. Um, I have high expectations, um, but I am really excited in that I know that we've got a really talented cast um, and we've got a really good team around us to, to make it happen, to pull it all together. Um, so I, I think it's going to be a really great show and I think I really love the energy that everyone's bringing to it. Um, so I thought there should be a pretty good buzz about the show. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm very, very excited. Yeah. And what's the what's the most like rewarding aspect? You know, when you complete a show, what's the sigh of relief or the thing that you just go, wow, that was. It's when everyone comes together with a common focus. I think when you see everyone that that uh, there's so much work comes together to put on a show like this, whether it's the lighting, whether it's the crew backstage, whether it's the band, whether it's you know front of house. It's not just the people on stage, it's the directors, it's the costumes, it's so many elements. Um, you know, that's why it's such a wonderful art form. There's, there's so much involvement from so many people. And when you see it all come together and just work seamlessly, all these different bits of this massive machine come together and just work perfectly together, that is like one of the most satisfying moments. That you, it's just really a really great thing. And if the if you were to predict what's a scene to get excited for for the crowd, oh, there's lots. <laughs> Holding out for a hero, that's great. Holding out for a hero. Yeah, the final gym scene, that's pretty awesome too. Um, oh, even just the finale is fantastic. The opening, oh, there's well, there's too many. I like it. <laughs> Lovely. Typical director, got to list them all, got to make yourself, you know, <laughs> sounds super, super good. Um, it's been an awesome day on the podcast and I'd like to thank you for coming on. It's been excellent. It's been awesome to be in the chapel. You wouldn't even recognise it today with all these different sort of props that you've seen and everyone running around. It's uh, quite amazing. And um, it was really interesting to reflect on a common focus and purpose and being united as a team because in musical we've got a hundred people just in this one alone yep. that are all working together and um, yeah I can just feel it being in here for 15-20 minutes about how how cool it is and the buzz and it's electric and yeah. it's on about two weeks is it a week or next week, week, away, next week yeah next week yeah. It, it starts so yeah I hope it goes well and I wish you good of luck, the best of luck so yeah Anyways, that's it today for the Scotch Podcast episode two and we'll see you next week for episode three. So thank you and see you later.